Hello everyone and welcome to another Roaring Records tutorial. Today we are going to be discussing the step sequence feature in Logic. Um, you may have seen things like this before in other DAWs that are uh, used, but um, this is something I think it was updated in Logic Pro 10.5, but some people might not know it's there, so I want to share it with you. This is mainly used for creating drum patterns. I definitely think it's the most effective thing that you can use it for. So the first thing I want to do is have my software instrument. If you don't know how to do that, click plus, click a software instrument and add. And then I'm going to convert the software instrument to a drum kit. This case, I'm going to use an electronic drum kit and I'm going to use Atlanta for the fun of it. Now, if I want to use the standard piano roll, all I have to do is open up the scissors. And now here is the standard piano roll. I can begin writing notes using the pencil tool uh, in the piano roll. But sometimes we don't really want to write drum rhythms like that. So there are two options. First, you can right click and create a pattern region. And that looks like this. And you'll notice everything down here just switched. This is the step sequencer tool. The other option that we would have had while looking at the piano roll was just to switch to the step sequencer. And that automatically sets up the uh, step sequencer to be the default. But I'm going to go back to the pattern region. Um, what's kind of neat about this is that right here it breaks. I'm going to make this part bigger for you so you can really see it. It breaks the measure down into 16 equal size pieces. So this would be considered 16th notes. So now you have 16th notes going all the way across with the main beats of the measure, like where the metronome would hit, occurring here, 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 and here. So those are the main hits or the beats. Now you'll notice in my pattern tool, it just took that and multiplied it across all four measures that are in the pattern. So whatever is in this one measure is being multiplied across the duration of the pattern tool. So that sounds like this. And you'll notice that as this plays across, you are uh, seeing the movement of the playhead and each time it gets to a new row, it plays something different. So if I want to add some snare, I can add some snare. If I want to add some hi-hat, I can add some hi-hat. And what I have created is actually called a backbeat. And a backbeat is a great place to start um, with what you're doing because a backbeat can be modified into lots of things. So we'll turn my loop region on here and here goes the backbeat. Bo do 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 So that's like Billy Jean. And what you can do then is begin to modify off of the backbeat and create rhythms that might fit different genres. So maybe something like this. And you're able to play around and create different um, feelings, different uh, everything as you go, just based on where you click and add notes. So this is really effective. Now, what if I didn't want this to all be uh, the same thing every measure? Well, I could come right here and change from 16 steps to say 32 steps. Now I see two measures worth and it will repeat those two measures or even I could go up to 64 steps and have two different sets of 32 by clicking here and that allows you to create four diverse measures of drum rhythm. So maybe you don't want your cymbals to sound the same every rhythm or you want to add a few extra kicks in along the way. So you can actually create four measures that are diverse and different so that you do not uh, have too much repetition on what you're doing. So 
Um, that is the step sequencer tool. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, feel free to hit the thumbs up and like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.